Hello and welcome to Lasting Legacies. I'm Stephen Gunn, my co-host, Evan Herman. Hi, how are you? Excited about today's episode, Evan. Who do That's we right. have with us? We have Jay Stevens. He's a personal mentor of mine. He is the CEO of SCFM, which is an oil and gas compression company. A lot of great wisdom that, that I've learned from him over the years. And, you know, today uh, we're going to talk with him about culture and what that means and just how great of an example he's been in his own company and how we can apply some of the lessons that, that he's learned through that in our own businesses, in our own families as well. So stay tuned. You're not going to want to miss this amazing episode of Culture. Thank you so much. We'll see you right back. Welcome back to another episode of Lasting Legacies. I'm your host, Evan Herman, and this is my amazing co-host and friend, Stephen Gunn. Hey guys. And we have none other than Jay Stevens, a mentor of mine, a CEO of C SCFM. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of alphabetical numbers in your <laughs> number, alphabetical letters That's in your name, company. So yeah. explain what C SCFM is. Well, SCFM is uh, an oil and gas company. We build gas compression systems uh, for power generation, for refineries, for transmission and uh, for gathering stations, those kinds of things. And the name SCFM stands mm -hmm. for standard cubic feet per minute, which is how you measure right. gas as it goes through a pipe. Sure. Just random question. Do you guys ever in your office try to say your name 10 times fast? No, Evan. <laughs> we don't. <laughs> well, getting into the real questions here, Jay, I've known you for a while. And tell our audience a little bit about you, a little bit about what you do. And it seems like every time I talk to you, I find out that you have an, another degree that I was unaware about. So just share who you are with our audience. Well, that's a mouthful. So uh, <laughs> I grew up in Oklahoma City. Uh, a family of uh, five kids and had a mom and dad that were great. Set a great example for us. Couldn't ask for anything more in terms of growing up in a, ni in a nice home, a loving home. Um, so coming from Oklahoma City, uh, one quick funny thing, I went to a Catholic high school, although I'm not Catholic. Okay. So, Me too. And I think to this day, I think I'm still the only starting quarterback Protestant quarterback oh, wow. they've ever had. Wow, there you go. So um, that's, you know, yeah. a notch in my uh, pistol handle. But um, so that's that's kind of my background. That's kind of where I come from, my roots, so to speak. Awesome. So on that, I heard, I heard Evan told me that you guys, you actually have a few degrees, academic degrees. What kind of degrees have you, are there I, a field in? I do, I do. Um, I've got several degrees, but really the, 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 the beginning of that was I found, found myself as a freshman at OU. Okay. The year that they allowed freshmen to join and live in fraternity houses. Okay. That was a bad thing for me. <laughs> as it is for a lot of people. I tend to be a leader, and so um, you know, in that environment, I was a leader in some things that probably weren't really good education-wise. Sure. I fell asleep in class a lot. And here's one quick story. I, I went to zoology class, the last class of the semester, promptly fell asleep. Oh, no. And at the end of class, one hour lecture, at the end of the class, I became aware people were clapping and starting to stand up and give a standing ovation. So I kind of got up, and the guy next to me goes, wasn't that a great speech? And I didn't hear mm. a thing. I was asleep. And I made my mind up at that point that I was going to take school seriously and take education seriously. So I, uh, I, I Got a double major in business and broadcast journalism. Okay. Okay. Um, I went on to get my master's in management information systems. Okay. I got another master's going through seminary, uh, the equivalent of a master's in divinity. Uh -huh. um, the Army sent me to uh, an organizational effectiveness school, which gave me the equivalent of a master's degree in organizational development. And then I got a law degree, so I've got a, I've got a few degrees. Okay. So that's like five or six. Quite a journey. That's yeah. wonderful. So you are a well-educated, astute man, and that's one of the things that I love about you because, you know, not to toot how many degrees that you have, but I say all that and ask you to, to share that is because you have so much wisdom in so many areas that as someone who has been mentored by you, 
has received the benefit of the time and the education and the sacrifices that you have made in in your studies. So as someone who, who receives from you, I appreciate that very much. Well, remember what Colin Powell said about wisdom. It comes from making a lot of bad decisions. <laughs> So I've certainly, I've certainly done that, but uh, I'm, glad I can, I, I'm glad I can help uh, young men like you, Evan. It's, it, it makes me feel good, and it allows me to use all of that education and all of that <laughs> wisdom um, to help. Awesome. Wonderful. Yeah. Well, we'll go ahead and just take a break here, yeah. and uh, we'll come back, take a bit from our, hear from our sponsors, and uh, we'll be right back with more Lasting Legacies. Don't go anywhere. This program is made possible by the generous support of The Demand Project, a nonprofit organization fighting to eradicate sex trafficking and the sexual exploitation of children. To find out how you can help, please visit thedemandproject.org today. Could your business or organization benefit from TV advertising? KGEB Tulsa TV 53 broadcasts from the campus of Oral Roberts University and reaches the greater Tulsa metro 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Contact us for more info at 918-488-5300 or visit kgebamerica.com slash sales. Welcome back to another episode of Lasting Legacies. I'm Stephen Gunn and my co-host Evan Herman. Today we have with us Jay Stevens with C SCFM Compression Systems. We'll get that right at some point, but uh, Jay, thanks so much again for being here. Good to be here. It's pleasure to get to hear sure. from you and talk with you. Uh, you know, one of the things that stands out to me when we talked last time was, I know you're the C CEO and president of, of the company, um, but one of the key things is the way you see that, mm -hmm. being the CCO or the chief culture officer. That's true. Speak to that and what that approach has done for your company and in your life, really. Cult, to me, culture is everything. And I, I, I began to become aware of that in high school, playing football and understanding, um, you know, what winning teams have and what mm -hmm. losing teams don't have, yeah. those kinds of things. Later on in life, as I went through the military and then uh, eventually uh, began doing some preaching, I, I was a pastor for about 10 years, full time. Whenever I would preach on culture, to try to get a good example of that, I had to go to sports mm. or, or the Bible. Yep. Those are the only examples I could come up with. And I said, there's got to be examples in business. But uh, culture is very important to us at SCFM. When I joined the company in 2009, I'm a one-third owner. Okay. I've got two partners. And the common, we're as different as three people can be, but the common <laughs> denominator with us is we're all three believers. Mm -hmm. So I sat right. down with them and I said, guys, let's, let's describe a culture that we yeah. want to have in this, in this company and let's define it and let's make sure we hire it, uh, yeah. hire to that culture, Good. and let's make sure we set the example right. for that culture uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. And so one of my partners said, okay, so what I'm hearing is this. We want to hire the right people we want to work with them every day like their family. We want to grow old with them. And then when we die, we want to go to heaven with them. And I thought, you, you know, you just summarized that's everything. It. That's it. So that's really how wow. we're, that's really how we're uh, organized. And again, I think I'm the chief cultural officer, uh -huh. which means every day I need to set an example of what we want to be and what yep. we aspire to be. And, um, and I think that's the most important thing I do. I think that's job one with me. Right. That's great. Yeah. Now, what, uh, and I, I remember hearing, you get the pleasure of sharing one of our lunches, which we so appreciated hearing yes. from, from right. that with yes. YBT. One of the examples I think you talked about there was there was a season in which the company went through some, some challenge where that culture was an undergirding. No, no doubt in my mind that held us together. So we set out to establish this culture, mm -hmm. and I picked out three people in the company that I was going to pour into as a, as a part of setting an example. And... Let me just quickly tell you one of those sure. guys. Uh, I, I, I met Randy, I'm gonna use his first name. Yeah. Uh, it, when, I, when I came in, I interviewed everybody in the company to find out what's going well, what's not going so well, what needs my attention. I quickly learned that Randy was probably the most influential person in the company. He had worked every job, he'd been in the industry for 30 years, and everybody looked up to him. But Randy had a problem. He had a wife that had MS. Mm. And if you know anything about MS, it's a debilitating disease. Yeah. Right. Randy had been married 20 years to this woman, and 19 of them she'd had MS. Man. 
So Randy said, Jay, you don't understand. I work all day and then I go home and I take care of my wife. That's my life. Yes. And I said, that, that, there's something wrong with that. We've got to help. Yep. And so we did. We, uh, we began to help Randy. Uh, we hired, as a company, we hired a nurse to go in there and watch her on Saturdays and Sundays so Randy could actually have a day off and do things people do on yes. Saturdays. Yes. He started going back to church again. And one Sunday, one Saturday night, he called me up and said, hey, could you guys come to church with me tomorrow? I said, sure, what's up? And he goes, I want to be baptized and I want you guys to be there. Uh, That's the reward yeah. of culture. Now, fast forward to 2013 and oil and gas took a nosedive. Right. Now, you can feel really good about your culture when the money's coming in and the POs are coming in and you're, and you're busy all the time. But the one thing that will test your culture is when you go through tough times. Trials. Yep. And we lost about $24 million worth of business overnight. It just, it just vanished because people all of a sudden, right. we're not going to produce, we're not going to do anything um, because the margin's not there. And so um, we owed both our banks a million and a half a piece. Mm. We had no work coming in. And I had to call the bankers up and explain things and tell them, here's what we're going to do. I had to lay off a, a bunch of people. We went from 60 employees down to seven employees almost overnight. Oh, my gosh. We found everybody a job yes. that we laid off. And then we just circled the wagons. And uh, as owners, we quit taking paychecks because we needed to keep these people right. on board. And we, we prayed almost daily. Uh, we, never, we never gave up. And of course, the industry has begun to come back. Uh -huh. so I want to hear the rest of this. Yeah, there's some more. As soon as we come back from break, yeah. we'll be right back. Hi, my name is Matt Moore, president of the Young Businessmen of Tulsa. I pray that this program is a blessing to you and that it inspires you to grow in both your business and personal life. Did you know that many people, both young and old, hold a mentality that their success is all about them? When in reality, we know that our success is dependent on how well we can serve and meet the needs of others. Owning a business is a huge responsibility, and success is very important for not only you, but also your employees and your community. If our community is going to continue to thrive, we need to be proactive in promoting a business community that's focused on being excellent stewards in all areas of life so we can create lasting legacies. Today, we have a fantastic opportunity in front of us that could really take our city and community to the next level. Each program we air has the potential to reach over one million households. But in order to do this, we need to reach an extra $1,600 in monthly reoccurring giving. YBT is looking for two types of partners, those who can pledge $9 a month and those who can pledge $19 a month. Not only will we continue to share our Christ-centered message, but in order to keep with the spirit of YBT, a portion of each monthly pledge that you give will benefit our monthly Pay It Forward projects in order to help give back to our city. If you decide to pledge $19 a month, we will have your name scroll at the bottom of the screen on each program as a proud supporter. Every pledge is a tax-deductible donation. Will you help me make a bigger difference in our city? YBT has a track record of creating better leaders, and we have raised well over $145,000 for community projects since our conception. Join us as a co-producer as we take this message and program across the airwaves. Help us steward a message that will literally change people's lives forever. To make your pledge, please visit www.patreon.com forward slash YBT. Welcome back to Lasting Legacies. I'm Stephen Gunn and my co-host here, Evan Herman. We've been having a really good time with Jay Stevens, CEO of SCFM. Yes, we got it right. And, uh, and even more importantly, maybe the CCO, Chief Culture Officer. Yes. And uh, Jay, I appreciate your, you're telling a really good story about your, your company and going through a hard time. Right. Go ahead and kind of finish that little bit. Uh, where you we, we had laid off a number of people, and we went from 60 down to 7 people. And basically, we just waited out the next couple of years. So one interesting story I told you we had begun the habit of praying every day about, you know, God helping us through this, this recession, walking through the valley of the shadow of death yes, in, in, a, in, a, in, in a way. And so 
uh, I was walking by one of my partner's office office and one day, and, and uh, the other partner was in there. I said, hey, guys, this is perfect. The three of us are here. Let's have a prayer. And one of my partners looked at me and said, I'm all prayed out. I've got, I got nothing else to say. And the other one said the same thing. And I walked back to my office lower than a snake's belly. I mean, I was, I did rock bottom then. Yeah. And so, but little did I know that in the background things were happening. Yep. And that was in February. By March, we had signed a deal for about $7 million. And uh, not only did we sign that deal, uh, that was for a power generation application. Right after we signed that deal, the guy we signed, well, the guy we signed it with referred us to somebody else out of South America. Hmm. This guy calls us on the phone and says, I heard you guys build compression packages, right. and we need compression for a project in, in South America. And we said, well, issue us a PO. We're ready to go. And he goes, I can't wait for a PO. He, it'll take two or three weeks for my people to generate a PO. What's your bank account number? I'll wire the money to you. <laughs> and he wired us $3 million that day. He'd never met us, didn't know who we were, just got a referral. You know, that's Jesus. That's so within two <laughs> weeks, you, we now have $10 million worth of work that we're doing on, and we went from zero to wow. 100 miles an hour in two weeks. It was that's fantastic. Awesome. That's incredible. It was great. Let me ask you, in conjunction with culture and how it was the underline to your business. Yes. For our viewers and non-CEOs and just employees, I shouldn't say just employees, but employees mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and parents even, mm -hmm. how can you be a change agent, a culture agent, where you're at in your company mm -hmm. or even in your family? That's a great question, Evan. I, and I would say this. First of all, you've got to be intentional about it. Right. You've got to be intentional. Second of all, I think you have to look at work a little bit differently don't look at your job as a place where you get a paycheck. Okay. The paycheck comes. Right. That's it. But don't focus on that part of it. I look at the different roles that I've had throughout life mm -hmm. as my platform that God has given me for me to make a difference in somebody's yeah. plural life in that company. So even if, if I only had four or five people reporting to me or if I had 25 mm -hmm. people reporting to me or whatever the size or nobody, doesn't matter. You're going to have a circle of influence at your job, and if, you, if, you, if you're intentional, if you set the right example, you will speak for Christ. I mean, okay. you will be the Jesus that they know yes. through right. your actions and through your words. So that's, that's what I would say to people is you don't have to be a CEO uh, to make a cultural impact. Be yourself, but be yourself as a representative of Christ wherever you are, right. and that's your platform. And I think for our viewers... One of the key things that you said that I really picked up on is don't just show up for a paycheck. No. Yeah. No. It's when people just show up for paychecks that they're not fully invested. And in any company, the most valuable people are those that buy into the company, not just getting a paycheck. Jesus had something to say about it, too. He said, um, be faithful in a few things. Right. And be successful at that. And then I'll, then I'll, make, I'll put you over more things. So... Again, even if you're just a, a sole contributor at work, mm -hmm. be faithful and be a good example, and you'll, you'll have an Im impact, and then Jesus will promote you to something right. else. Well, we have a few more questions for you right after the break. Guys, stay tuned for more from Jay Stevens. Are you looking to get married? Suit Connection is having an awesome wedding special. Buy four suits or tuxedos at $200 or more and receive free dress shirts and ties. Search for them on Facebook by typing Suit Connection Tulsa or stop by at 61st and Sheridan in Tulsa. Do you suffer with migraines, seizures, neuropathy, dementia, or movement disorders? Discover an independent concierge neurology practice with treatment from a Christian perspective by Dr. George Gonzalez. Welcome back to Lasting Legacies. We're here with Jay Stevens. Uh, Jay, so let's just continue the conversation here, culture and influence. Um, what, in light of that, what does the concept of legacy mean to you and, mm -hmm. and, and, and how has that succeeded and lives you've seen around your company, yourself, and leadership? I like to think of legacy as, I'll use a boating term, the wake. Okay. okay. Boat. I like we're, that. We're going through life, and we're creating a wake. Yeah. And, and, and that wake is the legacy that we're leaving. So, okay. um, 
An example of that might be this. When, when we first decided we were going to be a faith-based culture, yep. and you don't have to have a Christian-based company to do right. any of this. You just got to decide on the values you want to have. Correct. Uh -huh. And everybody agrees to that. Um, I would rather have a person who fits our values and is maybe not a superstar as a worker than to have a superstar worker who doesn't fit the values. Yep. That, that's devastating to a company. Uh -huh. When we first decided to roll this culture out, I, I told my two partners, um, roll your sleeves up because it's going to get dirty now. Yeah. We got to... If you're a family at work, yeah. you're going to know family business. You're going to know things that are awkward and uncomfortable, and you got to deal with that. That's okay. That's, that's how we grow in life. I said the first person we've got to sell on this new culture is our HR manager. Yeah. She's, the, she's the face of the company when we hire uh, people, and she was uh, an atheist. So I went, down and I went in and sat down with her, and I said, Shelly, we love you. You're doing a great job fantastic here's what we're getting ready to roll out and you've you've got to be on board with this so I want to make sure you're okay with this yeah and I, I laid out what we were going to do and she said well I don't understand the Jesus thing but who wouldn't want to work for a company that wants to treat their people like this and work together as a family and and, and right. help each other so I, I knew when I had her sold on it yeah. we were we were good to you're go golden. yeah so that's incredible yeah so legacy can affect Everybody, and it should affect a lot of people. Right. Right. Your legacy, my legacy, will be the people that I've made a difference in their life with, whether I planted the seed or watered it or whatever. I may not right. see the, the ultimate result of that, but my wife and I have a, a, a game that we play. And wherever we've lived, I think I told you I've moved a lot in my life because I've done a lot of things. Sure. Um, combat arms in, in the military, uh, full-time pastor, businessman, attorney, those kinds of things, when we've moved a lot, but we've got this game that we play. We always ask ourselves as we're leaving the town or, or, or the job we've had, why were we here in Denver mm. or in Chicago or in Detroit? Why were we here? Yeah. Why did God bring us here? And then we'll start thinking about the people and the mm. things that we touched. And that kind of helps reinforce why we're doing what we're doing. Right. That's good. Well, you know, it's funny because as we're talking about legacy, and lives and people that, that you've touched. You know, I get to experience your legacy firsthand. And the things that you are, are pouring into me that I've learned that I get to pour into to not only my wife, but my children, and things that I didn't learn until I was an adult, in business or in life or in my working relationships. And I get to see what ministry is through you and through the other relationships that I have, yeah. what ministry is outside of church. And so many times as Christians, I think we put ministry in four walls mm -hmm. and call it, you know, it's the pastor's job. But the idea of leaving a legacy, as you're talking about, is literally being and living and helping and sowing into the lives of others, mm -hmm. whether you're watering, whether you're planting, yep. whether you're harvesting. And from someone who who gets to receive from you, I just want, want to be very specific and say thank you so very much for everything that, that you've spoken into my life. I am a better person because of it. And I just, I, I can't say enough, but I just want to say thank you. I appreciate that, Evan. It's, it's a pleasure. It really is. It's a joy. And, and, and I get to pour into people's lives that I, I normally wouldn't have met or right. wouldn't have chosen as a friend. Um, and that's rewarding to me. That's good. Well, where I know that uh, for me, I have, I have had a chance, and, and people like yourself that have poured in, and I know that when you have a chance to really reflect on those, there's more growth that you can see as you go through the situations that apply and reflect on that. Right. And uh, so it's, it's always fun just to kind of take a moment and think, who has influenced you? Mm -hmm. And my dad, yep. you know, um, Men, other men in my life, other leaders, and so it's just one of those things you really want to make take a pause moment occasionally and just reflect on who has important to you, right. and what have I learned that I can give back to somebody else. Amen. So, we're going to take a take a break here and be right back with the last little bit here. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. This program is made possible by the generous support of OklahomaBanner.com. 
Oklahoma Banner is a locally owned company providing custom designed full color banners shipped directly to you. They offer a wide variety of banner products. Visit OklahomaBanner.com today. It's been said that life is about capturing moments. So I encourage you to capture this moment right here and take a picture of my contact information to reach out to me later. It is most important when you find a real estate agent to find one with the ability to communicate with all involved, knowledgeable about the real estate market, and one's ability to negotiate contracts. If you're thinking about buying or selling a home within the next year, reach out to me. I'd love to see how I can help you reach your goals. Thank you so much. Welcome back to this episode of Lasting Legacies. Jay, our final question for you today, how can we as YBT, Young Businessmen of Tulsa, or us individually, add value to you or your company? Because you've done so much for everyone else. I think what you're doing, Evan and Steven, I think having shows like this where you can talk about legacies, um, the lunches that you guys are already doing, maybe a workshop now and then on, mm -hmm. on something that uh, might benefit everybody would be, would be an idea I would contribute. Awesome. Yeah, we'd absolutely love to, to do that. I've been kind of thinking of some of those similar good, thoughts yeah. as well. Good. So, well, guys, thank you so much for joining us in this week's episode of Lasting Legacies. None other than Jay Stevens, a mentor of mine, CEO of SCFM. And Jay, thank you so much for being with us today. Good to be with you. you. I enjoyed it. All right, tune in to next week's episode and go out to ybtok.com for more information. Thanks for watching and make sure you live life in such a way that you can leave a legacy and influence others.